Lesson 13 homework. Number one, complete the sentences with the correct number of units and then complete the equation. Three groups of how many tenths is one and five tenths. I'm going to change these to make them into whole numbers. So in instead of one and five tenths, I'm going to change that to 15, thinking of it as 15 tenths. And groups of means multiplying. So three groups of something would be three times something is equal to 15. So three groups of what is 15? Well, three groups of five is 15. Since we're speaking in tenths, it'd be three groups of five tenths is one and five tenths. So one and five tenths divided by three is five tenths. B, six groups of, so six times something is equal to 24 hundredths. I'm just going to make it 24, 24 hundredths. Six times four equals 24. So six groups of four hundredths is 24 hundredths. And 24 hundredths divided by six is four hundredths. Five groups of, so five times what is equal to 45 thousandths. So five times nine equals 45. So this would be nine thousandths. And 45 thousandths divided by five is nine thousandths. Number two, complete the number sentence. Exp express the quotient in units and then in standard form. Nine and 36 hundredths divided by three. So they've broken it up to make it easier to divide here for us. So first we're gonna just look at the, the ones place. So in the ones place here we have nine. So we have nine ones. So we would do nine divided by three plus how many hundredths? We have 36 hundredths divided by three. So if we do the first problem, nine ones divided by three, that would be three ones plus 36 hundredths divided by three, that would be 12 hundredths. So our answer, three ones plus 12 hundredths is three and 12 hundredths. Part B, 36 and 12 thousandths divided by three. So we have 36 ones divided by three plus how many thousandths? We have 12 thousandths divided by three. So 36 ones divided by three, that would be 12 ones plus 12 thousandths divided by three, that would be four thousandths. So we have 12 and four thousandths. See, three and 55 hundredths divided by five. So we're gonna break this into tenths and hundredths. So we have 35 tenths divided by five plus five hundredths divided by five. Now, they did the tenths because if we were to just keep the three and do three ones divided by five, that's not a very easy number to divide by. So they saw that if we extended it to the tenths place, it would be 35 and 35 divided by five. That is one of our basic facts that we know. So 35 tenths divided by five, that would be seven tenths plus five hundredths divided by five, that would be one hundredth. And seven tenths plus one hundredth is equal to 71 hundredths. Okay, three and 545 thousandths divided by five. Okay, so we're dividing by five. I need to see, I could just take the one and do three ones divided by five, but that, I, that's not easily, I can't really easily think of the answer to that in my head. So I'm going to turn it into 35 tenths, like we did before. So 35 tenths divided by five, because we know 35 divided by five is seven. And then instead of just doing four, because again, four hundredths divided by five, not easy to do, but we can do 45 divided by five. So plus 45 thousandths divided by five. So we would have 35 tenths divided by five, that is seven tenths plus 45 thousandths divided by five, that's nine thousandths. And our answer, seven tenths plus nine thousandths would be 709 thousandths. 
Be careful that you don't write 79 hundredths. There's nothing in the hundredths place here, so make sure you get your zero as the placeholder there. Number three, find the quotients, then use words, numbers, or pictures to describe any relationships you notice between each pair of problems and quotients. So for this, there could be lots of different answers. I'm just gonna kinda show you what I notice between the dividends. So 21 divided by seven, well, that's three. Two and one tenth divided by seven, that would be 21 tenths divided by seven is equal to three tenths. So we would have three tenths. What I notice in here is that 21 is 10 times greater than two and one tenth, and three is 10 times greater than three tenths. So in part A, 21, when it's 10 times greater, we get an answer that is 10 times greater. So 21 is 10 times greater than 2 and 1 tenth. Therefore, their quotients, remember a quotient is the answer to a division problem. Their quotients are also separated by a power of 10. All right, part B, 48 divided by eight, that is six. So if we have 48 thousandths divided by eight, we get six thousandths. So that would be six thousandths. And I noticed the same thing. So 48 is not 10 times greater, but it would be a thousand times greater than 48 thousandths. So six is a thousand times greater than six thousandths. So you could write something along those lines. Number four, are the quotients reasonable? Explain your answers. So we have 54 hundredths divided by six. So we have 54 hundredths. We would get nine hundredths. But here they've written nine holes, but our answer is actually nine hundredths. So nine holes is very large. So this is not not a reasonable answer. Because if we start with 54 hundredths, that's already less than one. And so if we're gonna divide that by a whole number, which means that we're making it even smaller, getting an answer that's bigger than what we started with, it does not make sense. All right, part B, five and four tenths divided by six. So if we have, let's see if this just makes sense without actually solving the problem. So if we have five and four tenths and we divide by six, if we made this, Five and four tenths is pretty close to six, and six divided by six is one. And I would say that one is very close to nine tenths. We're just one, a tenth off. So this would be yes, that is a reasonable answer. And 54 divided by six. So 54 divided by six, well, we know that's nine, and that's one of our math facts. So if they got nine hundredths, nine hundredths is very, very small compared to nine. So I'm gonna say this is not reasonable. Okay, and number five, a toy airplane costs $4.84. It costs four times as much as a toy car. What is the cost of the toy car? So the airplane's four times greater, which means if we wanna find out how much the car costs, we need to divide the airplane cost by four. So we have $4.84 divided by four. And what we can do is break it up. So if we have four ones divided by four plus eight tenths divided by four plus four hundredths divided by four, we would get one, one, one in the ones place plus eight tenths divided by four, two tenths plus four hundredths divided by four, one hundredth. 
And if we add those together, we have one, one in the ones place, plus a two in the tenths place, plus a one in the hundredths place. So we get one in 21 hundredths, or a toy car cost a dollar and 21 cents. Julian bought three and nine tenths liters of cranberry juice, and Jay bought eight and seventy-four hundredths liters of apple juice. They mixed the two juices together and then poured them equally into two bottles. How many liters of juice are in each bottle? Okay, so the, this is going to be a multi-step problem. The first thing they did is they mixed the two juices together. So they, Julian had three and nine tenths, Jay had eight and seventy-four hundredths. So if they mix them together, let's see how much they would have. So eight and seventy-four hundredths plus three and nine tenths. So we get four, six, carry the one, nine plus three is twelve. So they start out with twelve and sixty-four hundredths liters all together, but then they pour them equally into two bottles. So now we need to take the twelve and sixty-four hundredths liters and divide it into the two different bottles. So I'm going to split it into 12 and 64 because those are both easy. You can divide them into two easily. So if I have 12 ones divided by two plus 64 hundredths divided by two, 12 ones divided by two is six ones plus 64 hundredths divided by two is 31, 32 hundredths. And then six ones plus 32 hundredths is six and 32 hundredths liters. That's how much would be in each bottle. In each 